What is going on? It's Suck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I'll be bringing you my full and in-depth review of the 2020 i5 MacBook Air. Also, I have already uploaded a number of videos in which I tested and reviewed the base i3 MacBook Air which I will leave links to you down below in the description. We are also on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button clicking that bell icon to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So let's start off by talking about the design. The design of this new MacBook Air predominantly follows the design trends set by Apple back in 2018 when they redesigned the MacBook Air. This means you still get the aluminium unibody enclosure in a choice of three different finishes, gold, space gray, and silver. There are also two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports that can be found on the left side of the machine, which this time, thanks to the power and capabilities of the temp generation Intel processors can power the 6K screen found on Apple's Pro Display XDR. But more on this in a little. With this new MacBook Air, we finally have an updated keyboard. Now, while I have previously defended the butterfly keyboard, as I personally liked how it felt and how clicky it would feel, I haven't to this day had any issue with any of my MacBooks, and those that I know of have not had any issues. And as I have stated previously, there clearly is some sort of issue with the butterfly keyboard, else Apple would not have acknowledged it and given us the replacement program. Now, after using this keyboard for a few weeks now, I can comfortably say that I like this keyboard more than the previous incarnations of the butterfly keyboard. It now has some additional travel on the keys as they've reverted back to the more traditional scissor switch mechanism. The arrow keys have also changed slightly and returned back to the inverted T layout, thus making it easier to tap type and not miss an arrow key though as i have been used to how they were previously it does take a little getting used to but this is another welcome change that i can appreciate and i'm sure you will too it was a little weird at first but you honestly get accustomed to it very fast also on the top right of the keyboard you have touch id built directly into the power button for secure authentication when logging in and using apple pay to make online purchases these macbook air models now come with the latest 10th generation processors from Intel and in the model that I am reviewing I have the quad core i5 which has the same base clock speed of 1.1 gigahertz found in the entry dual core i3 model though this i5 model has a slightly higher turbo at 3.5 gigahertz versus 3.2 on the i3. Now this is mainly used very briefly when opening up applications and files. Now, these processors are not designed to hold their turbo speed for a sustained amount of time which is evident by their thermal design as the processor is indirectly connected without a heat pipe to dissipate any of the heat. These MacBook Air models are available in either an i3, an i5 or an i7. The i3 or base configuration will set you back around £1,000 whereas this i5 model that I have here is around £1,300 but you've got to factor in that this also has double the storage of that i3 model. If you did want the additional power of this i5 over the i3 you can upgrade that i3 model to this i5 for an additional £100 or by upgrading the i3 model you could also get the i7 which will set you back around an additional £250. And with Apple now updating the 13-inch MacBook Pro to support the 10th generation processors, the time to purchase a MacBook, especially a 13-inch model, is actually perfect. Though these specific quad-core processors aren't designed for high-sustained workloads, and thus if you are looking to do work that can tax the machine, it is probably going to be worth your while looking into the MacBook Pro lineup, as they can sustain higher boost speeds for longer due to them having vastly superior heat management. If you are interested in seeing the results that I got when benchmarking this MacBook Air, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner to be taken to a video in which I exported 4K and Full HD video and ran a number of different tests, the links to which can also be found down below in the description. Along with this, I shall also be uploading a video in which I compare the i3, i5 and of course that maximum spec model with its i7. Therefore, if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell to be notified 
of when I upload that video. As standard, you will also get 8GB of 3733 MHz LPDDR4X RAM, which can be upgraded to a maximum of 16GB. This is faster than the 2133 MHz RAM that was found in the previous MacBook Air models. And you'll also find this low power DDR4X memory in the upper tier 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, the one that's got the 10th generation processor, not the entry model with its 8th generation one. These 10th generation processors also bring Intel's Iris Plus graphics, which have a sizable performance increase over the UHD graphics that we've had in previous generations. And when running graphics, benchmarks we see more than a 50% increase in performance which will make running some games titles a little smoother though I would not recommend this to anyone as it's still not going to be better than using a machine with a dedicated graphics card. Though I did not see much if any of an improvement when exporting full HD and video footage and if you are looking to do anything of this nature you will be much better off with a MacBook Pro as even the entry model with its 8th generation processor it was more than 40% faster at export in video and due to its better thermal solution it can also be pushed further for longer. If you would however like to see what it's like to play games on this MacBook Air and the previous 2019 model then be sure to click the card in the top right corner I will also leave links down below in the description to where you can go and check and compare. Now no one buys a Mac to game on I would argue it shouldn't even be its secondary purpose though if in between editing photos, videos, managing accounts, email, browsing, streaming, or anything else for that matter, you could sneak in a little bit of light gaming, but you won't be able to play games at such high resolutions and high game settings, making your experience a horrible one. But in a nutshell, even though the graphics performance has increased, it's still not good enough to play games comfortably. That is of course unless you lower the resolution, lower the settings and you're playing games such as Minecraft, games such as Battlefield, Call of Duty, GTA for that matter, even at lower resolutions and lower graphical settings they store outputted frame rates that were pretty unacceptable. The display on the MacBook Air remains unchanged. It's an IPS LED backlit display which has a diagonal screen size of 13.3 inches with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It can get fairly bright at around 350 to 400 nits, which is good enough if you're indoors. But as soon as you go outdoors, you may find it's not bright enough to combat reflections. This display also uses Apple's True Tone technology, which uses a number of sensors to map out the lighting conditions of the environment in which the device is placed in, and then adapts the temperature of the display accordingly. With that being said, you will also find the display is brilliant for an LED backlit display when it comes to backlight bleed, as this display shows no signs of bleeding through the corners, and due to this, you will find the display to be very vibrant and contrast rich, which is awesome when it comes to viewing videos and still images. The display is good enough as it is, though as I've said many times before, I would honestly like to see a slightly brighter display. As a Mac Pro user, I can honestly see the difference in the display brightness. All this means is when you're out and about using the MacBook Air, the display can look slightly washed out as it can't get bright enough to combat reflections from other light sources such as the sun. Apple may finally be listening to their customers, increasing, in fact doubling the base storage from 128GB to 256 which is a welcome and slightly overdue change. They've also done the same here, increasing the storage from 256 gigabytes to 512. Now this is quite interesting, especially paired with the quad core i5. It also means that the value of those 2019 models is going to drop drastically and that these models will potentially hold their value for a lot longer. Once again, like the previous few generations, the main input output port is the USB-C Thunderbolt 3 shaped port, which means that you have an enormous amount of bandwidth which can be used for connecting anything from multiple 4 or 5k screens and now even up to the 6k screen found on Apple's Pro Display XDR. If you need even more graphics horsepower, you can still connect external GPUs and other peripherals while charging them from either of those ports. As it's a MacBook Air, the two ports are found on the left side of the machine, as opposed to finding two on the left and right on the higher tier MacBook Pro models. Also on the right side of the MacBook Air, you will find a headphone jack. 
The speakers on this generation MacBook Air are unchanged, but that means they're still quite incredible. It's crazy that something of such size can deliver such well-balanced audio. The volume it can deliver is decently high. It has a surprisingly good amount of low end, which is something you really don't hear from laptops of this shape, size and weight. Take a quick listen to the sound that is reproduced from this MacBook Air. If there is anything that Apple need to go back to the drawing board with an upgrade change or just make, quite frankly, make it better, it's got to be that FaceTime HD camera and the microphones. Yeah, take a quick listen to this. So this is a video test on the 2020 MacBook Air. Now with this, you should get a good feel as to what the audio quality is like coming from this MacBook Air, along with what the video quality reproduced by that 720 FaceTime HD camera is like. Um, so what do you think? For a uh, a machine that's a thousand pound, it still should not be 720. We've got to start increasing this to at least 1080p full HD, but it is what we've got. But what are your thoughts on Apple keeping to a webcam that we've had since 2012? It's clear that Apple need to work on it, especially with an ever increasing amount of us working from home. These webcams and microphones are becoming more important than ever before. Battery life is on par with what I was getting with the previous model, which means if you're doing anything too intense on this machine, you can actually kill it within five hours. But with that being said, if you're using it to do anything as you pretty much should with a machine with this type of processor and browsing the web, emailing, streaming video and music, and just doing nothing too taxing with brightness levels around 60%, you can easily get around nine hours of battery life. This MacBook Air comes running macOS Catalina out the box, which while I've had some issues with Safari on other MacBook models running this version of the operating system, I haven't had them with this MacBook Air, which makes me think it's something else, not software related. But nevertheless, macOS Catalina brings with it powerful features such as Sidecar and the abilities it will bring when paired up to an iPad running iPad OS. The updated Find My application, which means that if your MacBook was to ever get stolen or misplaced, you'd still be able to find it, as even when turned off, it emits a signal to nearby iPhones that then gets relayed back to you. There are also multiple redesigns to applications such as photos, reminders, and so much more. With new features coming to Maps, the Mac just keeps on getting better with time. So in short, I think this is a worthy upgrade for anyone that's been holding on to pre-2018 models which had the massive bezels, MagSafe, Thunderbolt 2 and those larger USB-A ports. This is as you get a keyboard that you'll feel comfortable with and currently shows no signs of being unreliable. You also get the 40 gigabytes per second transfer speeds of Thunderbolt 3, which means you could connect and daisy chain up to two 4K UHD displays, both running at 60 Hertz. And can even power the 6K screen found on Apple's Pro Display XDR, though I'm not sure many are eager to connect their 1300 pound MacBook Air to a display that costs around four or five times as much. Not to mention you get all the benefits of the T2 security chip which will encrypt the SSD and is responsible for the fingerprint data stored on the machine. If this is your first time looking into purchasing a MacBook then I feel you won't be disappointed by purchasing this model as you'll more than likely get software updates and support going deep into the next decade. If that be security updates or features by purchasing a Mac, Apple look after you with updates for a very long time. The new Magic Keyboard so far hasn't displayed any issues or signs of deterioration, which is good, and fingers crossed this may be the keyboard that Apple sticks to for quite some time. It's a MacBook, which means great build quality, excellent support, and great software included. A superb color accurate display in which you cannot see each individual pixel. These MacBook models can always be found on sale, and I will leave links down below in the description to where you can purchase them for the cheapest prices. Even though this MacBook Air model has been on sale for less than a month, I can already see that there are places such as Amazon that are selling them for around 5% less than what Apple sell them for. 
so that has been it for today's video i hope you enjoyed the video if you are new around here then be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of when i upload and release any of my new videos if you have got any questions with anything you've seen in this video then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section or alternatively you can hit me up on my social media links to which can of course all be found down below in the description once again thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time have a good one